It's Platt, and today I ask the question, cola, will it ferment? That's next. All right, gang, I'm going to say when I start this video series, this video is probably one of the first ones I had in mind. Uh, it's one I get a lot of questions about is cola. And when I use the term cola, it could be Coca-Cola, Pepsi-Cola, any kind of flavor, whatever, just uh, carbonated, carbonated, sugary, soft drink, pretty much. Um, and, and it makes sense because if you think about it, soda is something kind of universal. Some form of soft drink, whether it's Coke, Pepsi, or whatever regional uh, soft drink, is available pretty much worldwide. This is universal. Also, too, one thing about soft drinks, especially here in the United States, not sure how it is everywhere else, uh, it's cheap. It's really cheap. Um, most soft drinks are what they call a loss leader at your local grocery store. They'll sell them below cost just to get you in. You know, a lot of your grocery stores will do 99 cent, two liter Cokes or Pepsis or whatever to get you to overpay for something else. So if this works, if we're able to take cola and ferment it, what a great cheap source of you know, raw materials that would be. Um, a good example is this. Um, I bought just store brand colas and I think each one was like 85 cents or 90 cents a piece for two liters. Basically if this works out we're going to be able to create a gallon of alcoholic beverages for under three dollars. You know maybe two, two fifty. Something like that. That is really great. Now again I don't know about the quality but the ability to do that, to be able to create alcoholic beverages that cheap, uh, is kind of tough to beat. Also, too, if any kind of flavor transfers over, again, we have an infinite world of flavored cola. So, again, this could really open up a lot of uh, possibilities to us. So, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Uh, real quick, as, as, as we do in all these videos, the big thing is, all right, what's in it and what's in it that could potentially stop fermentation? So, real quick, I want to go over what uh, what the ingredients are first and foremost i have sam's cola that is the walmart sam's club generic cola line um out of when i went down the cola aisle to do this video you know i first naturally thought of coke or pepsi whatever everything up and down the line literally you know in the ingredients spell out this is a preservative this is a preserve you know in big bold letters so you knew for sure and it had you know potassium sorbate and benzenate and all those well-known Preservatives, so I knew right there. All right, that was a no-go uh, The Sam's Cola just down the aisle. I, I went just where I saw had the least ingredients less Less things that could uh, stop the fermentation, but let's let's go over real quick um, What What's in here and what potential stumbling blocks we may have uh, Carbonated water should be no problem high fructose corn syrup, which again we talked about for fermentation purposes is no problem. Uh, caramel color, again some of these other beverages we've had some kind of food coloring in there, you know, in there. so again that hadn't been a problem. Uh, the next one brings up, kind of uh, not sure about, phosphoric acid, and we'll get to that in a second. Caffeine, which I guess I've never thought of it as a raw ingredient or anything, it's just in stuff, but caffeine. And last but not least, natural flavor. Again, we've seen that in products. There's really no definition for it, but it hasn't stopped us. So the two I'm really interested in is phosphoric acid and caffeine. Let's start with phosphoric acid. Uh, it's a colorless, odorless liquid that gives soft drinks a tangy flavor and prevents mold and bacteria. Now this should feel like, well, all right, we're done. We can't, we can't use it. But where my research. And again, this is part of the experiment, is that this is different than from a generic preservative. Um, like I said, a potassium sorbate however. I'm not sure how to eliminate, I haven't really found anything to tell me how I could eliminate like a potassium sorbate out of something or whatever. But acid, phosphoric acid, an acid, I think I do have something that could take care of that. And I know in earlier videos I said that we were just going to try, you know, the only additives would be like yeast or yeast nutrients and some sugar if we need to level up, but that, that we weren't going to try anything else. 
This one's going to be a little different because, again, I think this is a big one. If we can pull this off, I, I, I think we can do some real fun experiments. The way I want to combat the phosphoric acid is with uh, antacids. Um, here I got generic Tums, but whatever, add acid. And you can use uh, bisodium carbonate to, you know, people use that at home for upset stomach warmer. But I'm going to use an antacid that hopefully will battle the phosphoric acid at least to a level where it would not impede yeast growth. So hopefully this um, antacid will solve that. So what, next we go to caffeine. Caffeine, a central nervous system stimulant of the methyl, of the methyl methylxanthine class. Um, really no evidence that I found of any negative effect on microorganisms. Uh, most of the research out there will tell you you know, that it is not good for you. Um, on obviously, uh, funny enough, um, they claim that, uh, on Wikipedia, they claim that caffeine is the most popular psychoactive drug out there. And if you kind of think about it, like, oh, yeah, it is kind of, <laughs> kind of a big deal. But again, as far as anything adverse to yeast growth and fermentation, no evidence there. Uh, so, here's how we're going to do this little experiment. I've got my one gallon fermenter uh, sanitized. We're going to dump our cola into our fermenter. We're going to let it go flat. Uh, remember, part of the fermentation process is we're creating CO2. This already has a lot of CO2. Also, too, if I got too many bubbles in that, it's impossible to do an accurate gravity reading, which again, we need the gravity reading. I'm pretty sure we don't need any sugar, but you still want to do an initial gravity reading. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dump this in here. I'm going to put, instead of my, instead of my regular airlock or obviously the cap, we're going to just, I'm going to just put like a coffee filter on top and just let this sit for a day and just air out, get all that CO2 out. I'm also going to add a couple of these tums to hopefully work through that phosphoric acid. And we'll come back in a day, we'll do our gravity reading and then hopefully we'll, we'll pitch our yeast and go from there. So let me get this done. Like I said, I'm going to put these in here, let it go flat overnight, and a couple of these antacid tablets. So I'll see you guys in a day. All right, gang, so we've let our cola sit overnight, go flat. Um, it appears pretty flat. I added the two uh, tablets of antacid. Um, Again, I don't see any bubbling or whatever, so fingers crossed. Hopefully that works out. Let's go ahead and do a gravity reading, see where we're starting off from. Uh, like I said, I highly doubt we need any additional sugar, but you never know. Let's, all right. We are looking at around just a hair over 1.050 for original gravity. That should get us a little over 5%, which Again, it's perfect uh, for what we're doing to uh, probably like closer maybe to the mid fives, low to mid fives, percent alcohol by volume. What you get for us is uh, perfect. So all we're going to do now is I'm going to uh, pitch in our yeast nutrient. And again, um, and again the yeast, I, I use just a generic uh, SAF ale yeast, so five, a generic clean ale yeast. You can use whatever, but just for consistency purposes, that's what I use. So, I'm going to go ahead and add this stuff in, put my airlock on, and then we'll come back in 24 hours and see if the magic's happening. All right, gang, it's been about 24 hours, and I had a little bubble bubbling earlier, but I'm not getting a lot now. There's still a few rise to the top. There is still plenty of air pressure on the airlock, so we're getting some bubbling, um, but it's not starting off real strong. We'll go ahead and let this go for another week and then uh, do our gravity reading and see what we got. All right, gang, so it's been one week. Uh, time to see what we have here. Uh, our original gravity started off only 1.050, which wasn't going to give us a high ABV brew. But again, we're just wanting to see if this ferments. We could always, in the future, add sugar. Or I'm thinking we probably need to let this go a little longer. I'm um, still getting bubbling in the airlock, similar to uh, when we did the peppermint candy. Um, we might have to let this go longer in the week. The week's been kind of the standard measure, but again, we can see if we got fermentation. So, 
Let's do our hydrometer reading. Alright, we are going to come out around. We're coming out at around a little over 1.010. That should get us in the low four. So I would say that is a success. Uh, would really like to see that ferment down to at least 1.00, but um, again, for our purposes, that's what we're getting for you. Know, low fours, that is a domestic beer. That's your Bud Light, Miller Light, Coors Light. So have success there. Now, the most important part, let's give it a try. All right, don't just a faint hint of yeast on there. Uh, let's give it a try. Tastes like really, really, really flat cola, which it's kind of what it is. Um, I'm going to say I pick up a little more yeast than we did with the peppery candy. That being said, though, it's still fairly mellow uh, flavor-wise. Again, at the low fours, you're not really going to notice the alcohol until, until later. Um, overall, it's not... Overall, this is not too bad. If you had a soda mach stream machine, you could probably recarbonate it. Um, you could bottle, I guess, if you want to. Uh, I would still be cautious of that because, again, there's still probably some sugar. Still, yeah, yeast still has some work on this sugar, and if you were to bottle and pitch in more yeast, you could get a bottle bomb, which you don't want to avoid. But as far as, have we made something alcoholic? And the answer to that is yes. And does it taste bad? And the answer to that is no. So you might have a little something there. Well, I hope you liked this video. If you did, please subscribe down below. Also, please like the video because it lets YouTube know we're putting out good content. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, please leave them in the comment section. Or you can always contact me on the Twitter page. Until next time, bottoms up.